Good afternoon. Welcome to Cayman Turtle Center, and thanks for tuning into our Facebook Live. Uh, this, today is one of our Stead Talk presentations, Sea Turtle Education Discussions. And thank you for tuning in. I know that some of you guys might be wanting to watch a press conference, so we thank you for tuning in. Uh, you can always watch both of them afterwards anyway, because they're going to be recorded. My name is Geddes Hislop. I am the curator for terrestrial exhibits and education programs here at the Cayman Turtle Center. And this is part of our Earth Day month, Earth Month activities. Okay. So welcome to Cayman Turtle Center and welcome to our TED Talk. So today we're going to be talking about one of our presentations. Uh, in the same manner as a, as a regular TED Talk, this is going to take about 15-20 minutes. And we're going to give you a little bit of information, a little bit of background on the Cayman Turtle Center. So before we begin, I just want to give you a quick background for those of you that don't know about the Cayman Turtle Center itself. Cayman Turtle, Cent Turtle Conservation Education Center, CTCEC, is a conservation, education, and scientific study organization and one of the largest tourism attractions in the Cayman Islands. Its mission and work encompasses a multifaceted approach to the conservation of sea turtles and other indigenous animals. Through an extensive and proven captive breeding, rearing, and release programs, the center's focus is on green sea turtles, but also includes other species at risk, such as the Cayman Islands Amazon parrots. The aim is to sustain and increase the wild populations. The organization advances the results through the release of captive bred turtles into the wild by collaborative scientific studies with local and international partners and by integrating conservation community education. Okay. So, today, welcome to our TED Talk. This is part, as I said before, this is part of our Earth Month celebrations. Happy Earth Day, which happened back on the 22nd. So what we're going to do is you're going to get right into it. This is a quick thing on the, on, well, as you see, this is information on the Cayman Turtle Center and its release programs and what the res how it started and the results are. So if you've never known anything about the Cayman Turtle Center before, here we go. So before we begin, we're going to show you a short video. Okay, so that's an introduction to our release program. So we're going to continue from here. So this is about the green sea turtle. The green sea turtle is one of the largest, second largest of all the sea turtles. It's a one and the largest of the hard shell turtles. The ecological role of this green sea turtle is that it's the lawnmower of the sea. It's the caretaker of the seagrass beds, the near shore environment. Okay. So green turtles are the only herbivorous species of sea turtle of the eight species around the world. So what these, thing, these animals do is they graze the seagrass beds just like how you maintain a lawn and in doing so they maintain a habitat for a bunch of other species that use these beds like lobsters, crabs, uh, some species of fish and it maintains that environment, keeps it healthy for those type of animals. That's why it's called a keystone species because it actually influences the environment. Okay. The green turtle was, is important to the Cayman Islands, it's actually one of our national symbols. It's on our coat of arms. It's on our currency. It was the reason why we were, it was the reason why we were called when we were first named. When Ferdinand Columbus first discovered the Cayman Islands, first spotted the Cayman Islands, he called them Las Tortugas. Okay. And later on, other, other European settlers also came to the islands for different reasons. But one of the main things they did is they came here to hunt sea turtles. Because in, back in those days, in the 15, 1600s, 
Cayman Islands had the largest green sea turtle breeding colony in the Caribbean, according to the historical records. And over time, these Europeans, they began to hunt these things. When eventually they settled these islands in the 1600s, they developed this hunting into a, into a culture, into a way of life. Turtle rangers, the turtle ships, the turtle schooners, the iron men in the wooden ships. And that was that what made Cayman Islands famous around the world as seamen. Okay. They were very good at hunting these sea turtles. They developed a whole cultural, a cultural aspect around the hunting of sea turtles, very similar to how the Native Americans hunted the buffalo in North America. Okay. But they were so good at their job that they actually, they actually caused a functional extinction of the green sea turtle in the Cayman Islands. In 19, by, the 19, by the late 1960s, when the program first started here in the Cayman, in the Cayman Islands, the Cayman Turtle Center program, there were no breeding sea, green sea turtles in the Cayman Islands. In 1999, when the local Department of Environment started their beach nesting surveys, they saw, at the beginning of this chart, one nest. So in 1999, when they started this program, there was only one nest. But, as you can see, by the green lines, as it progressed, in, as, it, as it, the surveys progressed, the, the number of nesting turtles increased and increased and increased. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so the wild sea turtle life cycle is what our program is based on. The conservation program, the breeding program that we use here at the Cayman Turtle Center. And it's pretty simple. Female turtles nest between May and October. Okay. When they come up to nest, they lay their eggs. After about 50 to 60 days, the young ones hatch out. They disappear into the ocean. And then from, from there, we, they recall the lost years. They stay out in the ocean. It takes them about, we estimate, between 20 to 30 years to reach sexual maturity, at which time they return to the beaches from where they, where they were born, and they mate, and they begin breeding. At roughly two-week intervals, they come up and lay their eggs. And wild turtles will do this about three to five times for the season. Okay? And it goes around and around like that. We based our program on this. So in the early days, remember, there were no breeding sea turtles in the Cayman Islands. So when the Cayman Turtle Center started the program in 1968, we had to actually go find sea turtles. We went to places like Central, and Central America, South America, in Guyana and Suriname, and also the Ascension Island off the coast in the South Atlantic, way out there, which is also a remarkable sea turtle rookery even today. Since we started that program and we began our releases back in the 1980s, we actually got reco recovered tags from all around these places. Some of them in the ancestral places where we actually got them from. As far, north, as far south as Venezuela, as far north as, the Florida, as Florida Keys. Okay. So what we do here at the Turtle, Cayman Turtle Center is that we have our breeding pond. Those of you who have visited the center have seen the big pond, the very first feature you meet when you walk in the park. is our breeding pond, which is an artificial sea, with an artificial beach, where the turtles lay their eggs. Right now, during the month of April, we actually have turtles nesting on our beach as we speak. The turtles come up and lay their eggs at night. The farm turtles, or what we call our breeders, they lay their eggs, they can lay as many as 60 to over 100 eggs, depending on the age of the turtle, depending on the time of the season. Okay. So we don't actually leave the eggs on the beach. Our trained staff will collect the eggs carefully as a female lays them. We do this with minimum disturbance to the animal. And remember, turtles are highly instinctual, so she does not actually know that we're taking the eggs. She is going about this by instinct. Everything is happening behind her, she can't see what's going on. So we collect the eggs, the eggs are sorted, and stored in incubation, special incubation boxes. Okay, they're kept in sand, same sand that they use on the beach to maintain the levels of moisture and humidity that they need. Okay. And, they're, and they're kept in our hatchery at 86 degrees. Okay. With, at 86 degrees, which is a mid-range temperature because turtles, like other reptiles, their temperature determines the sex. So the way we work it is hot chicks, cool guys. Warmer than 86 degrees, you tend to get more females, Lower than 86 degrees, you tend to get more males. Okay. So there are two different types of incubation that we use. We use the styrofoam box incubation, which is what you see here. Okay. All right. So you end up with rows and rows of styrofoam boxes, each one filled with eggs, each one marked with the number of the breeder, the number of eggs, and the date. So we know that 60, 50 to 60 days from that date, 
these eggs are gonna begin hatching out. And we monitor these boxes every day. The other form of incubation that we use is what we call deep sand incubation. And that is, here at the Tame and Turtle Center, they designed this deep sand box. Turtles lay their eggs, based on our research, they lay their eggs roughly three feet deep in the sand. So we have simulated a nest box where you can see the eggs and you can see the process happening just like it would in the wild. So it's a window into a wild sea turtle nest. These, e nests are, these eggs are down about three feet deep in the sand, the babies hatch out, and you can actually see them progress their way up. It takes them roughly seven to 10 days to climb all the way up through about 300 pounds of sand. Okay? But they do it because they've did, that's what they're designed to do. So here you can see the babies actually creating a chamber. And as they dig, that chamber rises like an elevator because they all dig together. Okay. The baby turtles, when they hatch out, they come out of these leathery eggs. Eggs have a, are not hard. They're soft, kind of like a water balloon almost. Okay. So they don't crack the eggs. They actually tear their way out. And the baby sea turtle can fit in your palm of your hand. Think of an Oreo cookie with flippers. That's pretty much what they're like. Okay. So... Once we have these turtles, we have, re we have different types of releases that we do. One that we do is called the egg translocations. What we do is we create artificial nests on the beach. Again, using our research, we know how deep they go. We know how much, we know the width of the nest. We know the, the size of the egg chamber. So we create the, recreate these dimensions and we take eggs that are 50 days old within roughly 10 days of hatching and we bury these eggs on the beach. This, these nests are monitored. We have volunteers and staff that monitor the nests. And we know that within a certain period of time, these eggs are going to hatch out because we have a control group back at the park. Part of that clutch that we buried in the sand, half of that clutch stays up here at our, our center as a control group. And when they begin to hatch and climb out of the sand, we know that this group on the beach is within very close time doing the same. So usually they emerge at night. And those we use red lights to, to notice. This is an opportunity for visitors to our island to witness an actual turtle nest emerging from the sand. It's a very rare event because in the wild, they don't stay on the sand very, very long. The other type of release that we do is a hatchling night release. So we take hatchlings that have emerged right in our, right in our control environment, in our hatchery, in sterile conditions, and give them about three to five days to strengthen themselves. And then we take them out on the beach and release them at night. Just as if they were coming out of a nest and throwing on the beach, we put them on the sand, create a little funnel for them, and people can witness the turtles going down the beach. Again, we use red lights because red lights do not disturb them. Okay. The other one that we do is the most recent one, is the jump start program. In the jump starts, we actually do these in the daytime. We take the turtles and we give them a jump start because usually there's that gauntlet that they have to run between the beach and the deep sea. And they have to run a whole gauntlet of predators, fish and birds and other things that want to eat them. So we take them on a dive boat and we take them out and we find the sargassum, the floating seaweed, the same thing that's causing havoc on some of the Caribbean's beaches, messing up our tourism industry. That is actually a floating forest that the sea turtles, hatchlings, use to, to find refuge and food while they grow bigger and stronger. So we take them out in, this, in these boats and we find these seagrass, these seagrass mats and we take them into it. And they have an escort. So we actually escort them, protect them from predators, and take them into the seagrass bed, or sargassum bed, sorry. Okay. That's how they get a jump start in life. The most popular and common one that we know of is a head start. Head start means that we take turtles that born and raised at the hatchery, at the, and in the hatchery at the Cayman Turtle Center, and we raise them until they're a year to two years old. At that point, they're much too large for many of the predators that would normally take out the hatchlings, and they have a much greater chance of survival. So at this stage, they can, they can release into, directly into the water at, during the daytime, and other people can participate. We do a lot of, to get our youth involved, part of our, education, our conservation education program, we get the youth involved. So we have school groups that volunteer and do things like, uh, like community service or things like, or, or essays. And they, in turn, we reward them with releasing a sea turtle into the wild. So, in summary, what we have is our mature turtles are kept in our breeder pond. As they breed and they raise, raise their eggs, we collect the eggs. Those eggs are incubated in the hatchery. They hatch after 50 to 60 days. The first release point is the nest translocations, egg translocation, where we plant some of these eggs on the local beaches. 
continuing on, these, these eggs hatch after 50 to 60 days. The hatchlings are kept there. And as they grow and get stronger after three to five days, a portion of them are released into the wild, either through the jumpstart program or the night, the night release program. Those hatchlings are not released at that point. They're taken, they're kept, and they're raised from, from the, when they're one to two years old and become head starts. At that point, those are released into the wild when they're bigger, stronger, faster. Those are ones that are not selected. And besides, before the, I should mention, before they, the head starts are released, they have to undergo a rigorous, a rigorous selection and quarantine and health check program. Okay. Those hatching, those are not, those turtles that are not released at any of those three points, they go into our commercial tanks and they're raised, they're raised for food. Okay. Why do we do this? We are actually mandated by the Cayman Islands government to provide turtle meat for local consumption only. None of it is exported and we actually don't make a profit. It's actually, it's actually a program that is subsidized by the, by the Cayman government to sell at a loss. Why we do this is because poaching is one of the main issues for our native, for our local sea turtle population. And the only way to stop poaching, some people think, is through economics. Poaching is, an, is a, is a money-making venture. If the price was not, if the price was, was not high enough, they would not want to take the risk. It's risk versus reward. So we are able to undersell the poachers and thereby reduce the incentive for poaching by providing a, a sustainable source of turtle meat. We're inspected for both health and welfare, just like any other farm. And these turtles here, have made, these turtles here, we make sure that we process the meat and we can monitor all this, all this program and make sure that we know exactly what is going in and what is going out. Okay. So this is actually to provide, to provide safety for the animals that we're releasing. We actually have to give, give the population a local source of turtle meat. Okay. And it works. Over the years, it's actually worked. They do the same thing with the buffalo in North America, because that's how they brought the buffalo back. Just think about it. No farmed animal has ever gone extinct. And that's how the, bu the buffalo, the North American national animal, came back. Or the American, not the USA national mammal has come back. Okay. So in summary, a long time ago, prior to the 1960s, commercial hunting of sea turtles was a way of life. Now we farm sea turtles. By commercial farming, we can provide turtles for, for the turtle products. We can release, we can do research, and we can also use them for conservation education. So now we're back to this. Okay. So when we started our release program back in, in 1980, it takes, remember the, you remember the chart earlier, it takes the turtles roughly 20 to 30 years to reach sexual maturity and return to the beach where they laid the eggs. When we started back in 1999, roughly 20 years later, all of a sudden, the number of the turtles began to increase. So there was evidence for us to suspect at least that the program was working, but we needed to take it further. So we worked with an international study sponsored by the Darwin Plush Initiative out of the UK. The Cayman Turtle Center, together with the local Department of Environment, working with University of Exeter in the UK, University of Barcelona, and University of Georgia. We did a two-year study. Short summary, the results of the study using DNA analysis, we realized that out there in the wild, we had turtles that exhibited mitochondrial DNA from the North Caribbean, the South Caribbean, and the South Atlantic. Now, the North Caribbean is where we are. The South Caribbean, our turtles Turtles range the whole Caribbean, so it's possible that South Caribbean DNA could have gotten to our, our gene pool. But the South Atlantic, that's Ascension Island, and the only place they could get that is from our turtles that have been released here, because those turtles in that gene pool are turtles from Ascension Island in the South Atlantic. So we knew the program was going. Remember in the video earlier, you might have mentioned, you might have heard me mention that we know at least 50% of the turtles that were released can be traced back to our program. Following this, the conclusion of the study, we realized that 90% of the wild nesting sea turtles in the Cayman Islands can be traced back to our program. Majority of them are half siblings. What does that mean? That means that they have been out there, they're viable, and they're breeding, 
and they're, they're crossing with a, to the wilds population. Okay. So basically, together with the programs from the from Department of Environment and other things, we helped to bring the sea turtle back from the brink of functional extinction here in the Cayman Islands. Okay. So over the years, this program has received a lot of criticism, a lot of questioning, and our, the people who started this program way back when, they had a vision. Nobody had ever done it before. So we were kind of, we were working on what we were working at and working it as we were going along. But the thing is, it works. Over time, we've developed a system and we know that the system works. One of the things that gives us hope is that this quote from the Dorello Wildlife Conservation Trust, which is known internationally for its success in bringing species literally back from the brink of extinction. Their chief scientist, Dr. Carl Jones says, we must understand that true conservation success can take decades, decades before tangible, measurable results are seen. This is not a get quick, quick get, this is not a quick scheme. This is not something you're gonna see on Discovery Channel and the whole program happens in one minute, in 30 minutes or an hour. This is something that took decades. From 1980 to 2018, this is what happened. And the results are here and now they're measurable. We're not unique in this because of the, world fa the famous blue iguana. In 2003, they started with less than 15 individual animals, started their breeding and conservation program and releasing them into the wild. In 2018, over a decade later, they finally were able to produce their 1,000th iguana into the wild. So, where do we go from here? We will continue our program. We will continue improving. We will continue coming up with better and better ways of, of working with our iconic national animal. Because by saving the sea turtle, you're saving the ocean. Because this is an animal that uses the whole ocean. They range through the deep sea. They feed in the near shore. They nest on the beach. By protecting this animal, we're protecting ourselves and our culture and our identity. So came on to the center, we'll continue to do this program, and maybe one day we won't have to, hopefully. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, to email us or write us on our Facebook page or by email, like us on our social media. Hope you enjoyed the program, hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you for coming. And here are some other things you can do while at home to celebrate Earth Month and progress improvement in conservation and climate action. You can join the Cayman Turtle Center and other Earth Month uh, committee partners in the Cayman Island and other social media pages. Um, for these projects, that includes the Cayman Turtle Center, Cayman Eco, Cayman Island Tourism Association, Cayman Mangrove Association, the Cayman Compass, the Central Caribbean Marine Institute, the Cayman Island Department of Environment, the uh, National Trust for the Cayman Island, the Guy Harvey for the Foundation, the Plastic Free Cayman, and the uh, Ocean Frontiers, as well as the Cayman Island Department of Tourism. You can participate to the Cayman uh, Turtle Center social media's activities. There are some fun and interesting ways to learn about the climate action, including learning how to reduce your carbon footprint which means cutting down on your personal usage of resources directly or indirectly linked to energy production. Um, a simple search on the internet will give you a lot of ideas. Uh, you can decide on three ways in which you can immediately reduce your carbon footprint. With this many people staying at home already, the pressure on earth has been reduced. We have seen stories about smog already clearing in cities as well as reports from the scientists about movement in the earth cross crust being reduced. Now is the time to decide on things you can do to cut down on energy, such as eating less meat, turning off the tap when you're brushing your teeth, choosing to buy locally grown food, and turn off the TV when you're not using it. Make it a habit starting today. Um, you can create a kitchen garden of herbs and take seeds from uh, recently eaten fruit to start growing a plant to help create a more green for our island. You can support the conservation effort going on the www.turtle.ky uh, to find out how you can support the conservation of sea turtles, a keystone species for our marine ecosystem. We hope you will visit us on our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for Heart Month and other activities. Thank you for joining us today, and please remember to like us and share this video on our and other uh, Earth Month posts or our friend and family. Thank you.